Hello and welcome to the show. We are back on Forza Horizon 4, building another vehicle to take on the hill climb stage. A couple of things before we start. I apologise, my voice is still a little bit on the iffy side. And second of all, we are supposed to be building a 911 for this one, but the 911's much too high a PI. Well, they start with an S-Class uh, for the ones that were requested. I can't run those up the hill climb, so we've gone for the second most requested vehicle, which is the Land Rover Series 3. An in interesting prospect. Now, I'm not expecting it to be massively fast at all. However, there is half a chance it could be better than I'm expecting. So, we can't get race tyres on the vehicle, which kind of sucks. Although, it is to be expected. I was, <laughs> I was expecting to be stuck with these off-road tyres. Doesn't mean that it can't be fast up the hill. Now, I'm hoping... Nah, it's not quite as big as I'd like to have seen on the vehicle. I was hoping we were going to get some massive tyres on this, uh, but not quite. Basically, my theory was we might have been able to get this to be half decently fast with some massive tyres. Relatively light is the Land Rover, so massive tyres and a good amount of power might have done the trick. However, unfortunately for 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 us here, uh, we are not going to see. Well, we're not going to see enough grip I wouldn't have thought. I could be wrong of course uh, from all of this we will have to wait and see uh, so that's for that. What engine are we going to have in the vehicle? Uh, we can have a turbo rally or we can have the racing V8. That would be fun however far too much PI. I guess we're going to be on a turbo rally engine then. For the, It seems like an odd. I was expecting a normal V8 option I'm not going to lie I was hoping for a fairly normal but no. <laughs> no we've just got We've got Lunatic uh, V8 or Turbo Rally, which neither are really very helpful, I'll, I'll be honest here. Uh, i say that. Turbo Rally engine is good, do not get me wrong. However, I don't actually know if that's going to get me the PI I need to get this up to the top of the top of the, the class. Uh, I think we're going to have to go with the upgraded gear. We're going to have to have an upgraded gearbox, of course, because uh, the standard one, I just don't know how many gears, probably four, let's be honest. Um... Now, my concern with this engine is will we get the power to get to the top of the class? Uh, the answer to that is yes, we will. Fantastic. Uh, the other concern is can we do it in such a way as to well, actually get to the top of the class? Or will we prat around and, yeah, we're going to do the... Th <laughs> it's the problem with a bloody turbo rally engine. Oh, bugger. Uh, <laughs> this is the problem with the turbo rallies, uh, is they are a nightmare to build. Can I get, uh, can I get three PI? I am, um, I don't want to lose anything from there to get it. Uh, I didn't think I don't I stuck any of this on anyway. No, bugger it. Um, I guess I could technically, I guess I've made this heavier. It might uh, not given us enough PI, is it? That's only given us one. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess you can do that. And then, oh, maybe that, and then... Oh, God's sake! <laughs> I just want that one. Uh, okay, maybe we're going to play... We're going to play funny buggers, aren't we? And this is why I avoid building with Turbo Rally engine for a lot of stuff. Uh, it is a good engine to work with. Can be a good... It can be a fast option. Uh, it can also be an utter bloody nightmare. That's still giving us three PI to work with. Uh, unless we do that, that's 500 horsepower. And then we've got 5 PI we can make up, which I think I can probably make up with for bits and pieces in here. Uh, <laughs> it'll do. It will It will do. I mean, 500 horsepower is a lot on this course. 500 horsepower, 560 torque is a lot. 2,600 pounds is actually not as... I say it's not, it's not terrible in terms. It's not as light as the Lotus, no. But it could be worse. The downsides, of course, we haven't got race tyres. They're not very wide. It's quite a top-heavy vehicle. If we were running in the rain, there'd be a real concern of it falling over. Thankfully, we're not running in the rain. Uh, but, yeah, that's that would be a thing. As it is, you're 1PI short. That will, that will do on the Land Rover. I think it's ready. I don't know if I'm ready, but I believe the car is ready to take on this uh, this hill climb stage. 
So, here we are on the start line with the Land Rover, where I'm going to have three attempts to get up the needle pass as quickly as possible. Now, our current leader, let's face it, the Lotus 340R, we're not really going to be competing with that. That did a 123.6. We can kind of forget racing against that. I'm probably, possibly going to be looking to try and go under 1 minute 30. Uh, that's the sort of tyres we saw from the GMC Bandura, the Ford Transit, the 29.6. Uh, this might be a little faster than those, to be fair, all-wheel drive. Turbo rally power should help it, but of course we won't have the physical grip. And well, grip is very important. Grip is the most fundamentally important thing on this stage. Acceleration is nice and all, don't get me wrong. However, we need to have the grip. Now the Jaguar F-Pace, I think the F-Pace might have been on off-road tyres rather than race. I can't actually remember. Either way, uh, while yes, the all-wheel drive traction in the F-Pace was good, uh, the fact that it had humongous tyres all around is what helped it. That's why it drives so nicely on here when built in the way that we build for this series. The, yeah, the F-Pace was very, very quick. This is, I mean, not as good through the corners. It is very fast, very fast, it is relatively fast accelerating. Uh, that much is for sure here. Oh, and we can get away if we put a wheel on the grass in this. Doesn't really matter. It's got the grip and whatnot to get away with it. However, we are slipping and sliding our way through a lot of these corners where I would really rather not be doing that. Uh, come on. Go on, Land Rover. Nope. There's that understeer. That's, uh, that's what's going to kill its speed. Realistically, up this course, the understeer like that will, will, will not help. Let's be honest. The time is not looking great at this... Uh, well, as he heads towards the penultimate hairpin, one more corner to go for the Land Rover. What will it be around here? I've got to wait a year to get on the power. There we go. It is a run towards the line. Hey, it's underneath. It's underneath the 130. I think it's actually a very, very similar time to the Transit. Uh, 129.635. It is a fraction down on the Transit. So it is, yeah, kind of battling in that sort of an area. There might well be a little bit more time to find out of the car. Not sure how much. Well, it is on to the second run with the slightly mad Land Rover. Around six tenths of a second is what I would like to find. That's probably the most sensible bench, most sensible target time. See if we can get this into the into the 28s. Um, it is not going to be the easiest thing ever. While yes, the acceleration is pretty nice. It doesn't have the grip. It <laughs> understeers its way through corners, something terrible, and while, yes, I much prefer planted cars, this one, well, you simply can't carry any speed. The other small concern with it is uh, suspension is a little bit, uh, the whole thing is a little bit wobbly in general, which won't really help its case, but, uh, yeah, it's more, as it's more, more to do with a combination of tyres, tyre widths, and all, all of that, and let's face it, this was never exactly intended as a uh, racing, well, may, I guess, they, it was never intended as a racing machine. I guess they probably used it in, you know, the big off-road uh, events and so on. Not for a narrow technical hill climb event against a Lotus. That's not really the primary strength for a Series 3 hand <laughs> Trover, but here we go. It's the joys of fours are for you. We can try and make it work. Uh, it's been a little bit of a scruffy run uh, from me so far through here. We will try and not go too understeery, although it's still... Yeah, it's still quite the struggle through all of there. Big slide up towards these hairpins uh, for the, well, the penultimate turn. We'll try and get on some power on the exit there. Second gear seems to be working quite nicely for a lot of this. Out of the final turn we go. Jump on that power. Try and make the most of the acceleration where we can. Ah, oh, it's not quite enough again. It's better. I think we're down to 29.1. 29. There we go. 129.151. It is a better time for the vehicle. It's still a little scruffy in places. Can probably, I can probably improve a little bit if I get everything right. Well, this is it. The final run for the Land Rover. Just, uh, well, what is it? One and a half of a... It's not much. Less than two tenths. We'll go with that. Uh, my brain's not really working very well, apparently. Not that it does normally. Uh, we need to find a teeny tiny bit of time, basically. I need to not be a Muppet while driving a very, very silly Land Rover up a narrow mountain road. No sliding the vehicle around, preferably. And no wasting massive amounts of time. Understeering our way through a corner. It's, I mean... <laughs> 
You know, we just need to get everything spot on. Yeah, it's easy. Easy, I say. Uh, <laughs> I've got to not start chucking it around here as we are currently. Come on, Land Rover. There we go. Uh, it's kind of the weight transfer. If it starts going a little bit as you're heading through these change of directions, you can get in a lot of trouble. Christ, they just can't carry any speed. There are cars that are close to flat through that sort of section, and this is a long, long way away from being flat through those sort of sections. It's 65 miles an hour there. It's understeering like crazy. We will we'll punch out the other side here nicely and all, but... Uh, you lose so much time mid-corner here, and that's to be expected on a stage, on a route, on a challenge such as this. Here we go, Land Rover. Make the most of this little bit of acceleration, this little bit of, uh, well, kind of, yeah, <laughs> faster zone. Not really a top speed zone. In, in relation to this course, though, it's going to have to enjoy the little, the little speed zones where it can get them. Uh, right, two more hairpins to go for the Series 3. If anything, I think we are doing a little better this time around. It is not the most cooperative of vehicles. It's not the worst thing to drive mind up here. It's just not very fast with all of that understeer. There we go. The final corner down. We are into the 27s in the end. That was actually a pretty solid run. <laughs> that, went, that went better than expected. We got everything just about spot on. I found more time than definitely than I was expecting in that one. A uh, three at twenty-seven point or one twenty-seven point nine. Sorry, uh, when you remove the time waiting for the start, that's actually not awful. But <laughs> I say that I say that it's not it's not awful. I mean, it's it's not the easiest thing to drive. Certainly up that course, as I said, there is just no grip. There is there is no grip in the vehicle uh, for taking those hairpins. Which is kind of what I was expecting once I saw the build come out, but there is a lot of power. There's a lot of power, there's a lot of torque. With the all-wheel drive, it uh, gets out of the corners well. It can certainly accelerate away out of the turns nicely uh, and make the most of its power where other cars perhaps not so much. And, I mean, yeah, like brakes and so on aren't the worst thing in the world. The stage time, that 27.9, will put the Land Rover into 19th place. It beats the Cadillac Eldorado, beats the Sunbeam Tiger, beats the Monte Carlo, even beats the RX-8, uh, losing out fractionally to a BMW Z8, uh, the SVT Cobra, the Chevy Bel Air. Uh, in fact, to only be a couple of tenths down on the SVT Cobra and the Bel Air and the likes, that's a pretty strong showing in some regards, in many regards, in fact, for the Land Rover to yeah, be able to go up, up there as fast. It's not got full race tyres. It's it's not got full race tyres, and they're pretty small tyres to go with it. Not okay. Rally tyres are still very good. Do not get me wrong, but uh, when grip is just about everything on a stage it's like that, for example, not having race tyres is a pretty big hindrance. So, yeah, a pretty damn good showing for the series three in all of this. And that will be it for this video. Of course, if you have. Vehicle requests for cars you would like to see run down this stage, please do leave them in the comments section. The most liked comments will have their vehicle run as long as it is a car that I can afford, a car that fits within the class restrictions and I can access and so on. Uh, however, that will be it for today. Thank you all very much for watching and until next time, a goodbye.